Hi, welcome to another edition of Ask the Editor. The last time uh, I talked a little bit about uh, the, the, the positives, the things that we, we like finding in manuscripts that make us keep reading and make us ultimately hopefully decide to publish a book. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about those things that turn us off. Because we always really want to get to yes if possible. We have so much to read that if we can get to no on the first couple of pages, unfortunately that's usually what happens. The easiest thing to spot is messiness. You'd be amazed how many manuscripts come in with typos, with bad grammar, with just mistakes right there on, on the first page, but misspellings. I mean, if we find two or three of these within the first three or four pages, it's very easy to stop because you just don't want to deal with something that's not going to be competently done. Also, if you take too long to get your story going, if the plot doesn't take off within the first several pages, then we're not going to get there. You need, you need to get the pacing from the very, very beginning. You also need a pretty inviting opening, uh, if you can. I would, one of the things that, that happens sometimes, I guess, is writers are trying to, to put you in a gritty moment from the outset, and, and sometimes the opening line can be such a turnoff that you don't get any further. I've created an opening line, for example, that might not get a reader any further. He picked at the open sore with his fingernail, then rubbed the pus on his pants leg. I mean, really, would you go any further? I wouldn't. And I've seen something like that, believe it or not. Also, one th big thing is that we feel the presence of the writer too much. It's from that school of, look, Ma, I'm writing, it's writers with capital W's. I used to say to writers, stop writing and tell me a story, because so many writers are intent in trying to impress the editor. And that's... The way you impress an editor is to tell a really good story. The ways, though, that, that people do put themselves too much into the, into the, uh, on the pages, like trying to use somebody else's voice. I mean, Cormac McCarthy is a great writer, but sometimes I wish he had never written because there's so many people trying to write just like Cormac McCarthy, and he does it better than anybody else. You need to find your own voice and not try to copy somebody else's. Using flowery imagery, I mean, look, Poetry, if you want to write poetry, do that. But don't don't put so many, I mean, sun dapple lanes. I mean, I see so many of those. And it's if 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 it just runs on and on and on, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep reading. Um, only descriptive sentences, sentences that just tell me more than I need to know. This is part of the pacing, of course. Too many similes. Um, uh, an example of that might be her smile had the softness of a newborn chick, and her eyes the radiance of the sun at dawn. Really? She had, she, she had a great smile and pretty, and pretty eyes. That's enough. We don't need all that. Uh, overuse of odd words. Throw away the thesaurus. Just, just use regular words. You don't impress me with, with your vocabulary and, and all the words you can look up and make use instead of the word that really what you're trying to say. Just stick with the regular words. Also, um, uh, uh, overuse of dialect sometimes. Dialect is, is hard to pull off, but it's sometimes necessary. But you, you have, to, have to work at using it right. Use a little bit and then ease out of it and just occasionally come back to it. Because if I see something that's loaded with heavy dialect, I'm not going to keep reading because I, re I know most readers are not going to read it if we put it in the bookstore. Um, another big no-no is what we call just mundane dialogue. If you ever read a transcript of two people just actually talking, a genuine conversation, it is so boring. Well, what you have to do in writing dialogue is make it come alive. None of this, hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, good to see you, what's up? I mean, get on with it. We don't need that. Also, mundane descriptions of things. I mean, if the phone rings, it doesn't, you don't have to count how many rings it has. You don't have to cross the room and pick it up and put it to your ear. You just answer the phone. You don't need to go through all those, those other stages. So, I think if you can, if you can, Keep the mundane aspects out of your out of your story out of your uh, story. You're way ahead of the game. Um, another thing is, if you can't, if I have read as far as 20 pages and I still don't know what the story is, then I'm probably going to give up there. Because if the story doesn't get started, if I don't get a sense of the plot and where it's going, then I'm probably not going to read much more than 20, 30 pages. And the final pet peeve, and I talked with my colleague here, Kathy Pories, and it's one that we both uh, uh, just drives us crazy is when someone speaks to you, they say, hello, he said, not hello, he smiled. He, hello, he said with a smile, but not hello, he smiled. I mean, that kind of thing. You said, spoke, whatever, but don't, don't 
don't use those words in combination with uh, facial descriptions and so forth. The one time I've ever liked this and it's now been overused is, hello, he lied. So that's, I hope, some tips for you to not do.